Hi there. Welcome to Patrick Scale Studio. My name's Patrick, and this is Woody. We'll be your hosts. All right, I've put Woody down. Um, we can go ahead and begin our video here. This is Build Video 20. Uh, this will be the final video here for the USS Curtis Wilbur and 1200 scale. Um, so we'll go ahead and first off show you this. Curtis Wilbur is finished. All the railings are on. All my painting is finished. We've got the SH-60 in place, and we've got the flag in the rear of the ship. I will have more detailed photos of this at the very end of this build video. Um, and additionally, we'll talk about what's up next for Patrick Scale Studio. So sit back and stay tuned. First steps in this build video, uh, as we get toward completion of the ship, is going to be these two assemblies. Uh, they are handed, one is for the port side and one's for the starboard side specifically. Uh, and I believe they are decoy launchers uh, from what I've read and uh, what folks have told me. So I've already gone ahead and completed the one that they've got uh, with circle number 34. I've got that completed and 34 goes on the port side. 35 goes on the starboard side. So here is what the port side assembly looks like. We can make that out okay. All right. And there are more photo etched than plastic on this. There's uh, only three plastic pieces, but there are two, three, four, five, six, six photo etched pieces. Uh, as you can see, the two main ones there, but there's a hinge here, 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 and here. <clears throat> and they are rather tiny. I definitely would recommend a, a little bending tool in order to get this complete and those bent well. I'm going to go ahead and put this aside. Uh, I'm not too worried about labeling them uh, because in the end it's going to be very evident which side they belong on just based on where those arms fall. So that said, it is important to pay attention to the instructions on which side you're doing so you know which side to put the arms on. Uh, because they would not be identical. Um, this has got an arm right here that's going aft. Uh, that arm right would be on this side over here because this is going to be on the starboard side so that this arm would be going aft. So as you can see it's on the opposite side. I'll go ahead and get to work on getting this complete right here and on camera. So the first thing we're going to do is get some of these little hinges bent into place. in our bending tool. Now notice I'm not bending them all the way. Uh, I want them open enough to be able to fit the pins on those arms into and then I'll squeeze it shut. And so, uh, nothing too tricky here on these. Um, it's just kind of standard, standard bends on these. In the end, they'll you'll, they'll want to be 90 degree bends. But <clears throat> after we get the pins for the arms put into place, then we can use uh, tweezers just to kind of bend them shut to that uh, final 90 degree bend. So. And you'll even come across some that you may have bent a little too much to begin with. Uh, and they're pretty easy to spread them a little bit and put them back into shape. Uh, the nice thing about the I Love Kid photo wedge, as lousy as some parts of it are, it is fairly sturdy stuff. So it can withstand taking a bend or two uh, back and forth before it snaps off. Unlike some of the other photo etch you come across uh, with uh, Pontos or K.A. or even Edward. Oh. Alright, and last little hinge here. 
This assembly does not take long and is not complex at all. The main thing to keep in mind is just make sure that you are following the instructions so that you are getting the correct you're getting the correct arms put in place for the the handed side that you're making. So this one's almost there. I'm ready to kind of did a little bend on its own, which is just fine. All right. So our little hinge pieces are now all put in place. <clears throat> so we'll go ahead and glue toothpick the bending tool out of the way. So for our starboard side here, I've already cut all this out, cleaned it up, and at this point I'm just kind of matching things up here. So this right here is 17, this is 15. 15 is not really, it does not really matter too much which way this goes. It's pretty much identical each, each way. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and get the hinge here. Uh, one thing I did notice when I was working on the port side one of this uh, is that the pins had to be cleaned up. There's a little bit of flash that made it just barely impossible to get these hinges to close over those pins. But once I got the flash scraped off with uh, just an X-Acto knife, I had no trouble at all. some sturdier tweezers here in order to finish closing that gap. Okay, so that matches up. All right, so our next step here is going to be to this closed up around this. Again, smooth sailing. And so this is this is nothing very complex, nothing very difficult. Uh, I just kind of wanted to show how this went together for you all in case you had any questions or anything like that uh, when you got to this this portion of the build. So there's one arm done um, and what this does is this uh, slots into this right here. There are already recesses molded into this part where you just slide that on. So take a little bit of CA on the inside here place and then I'm going to use again tweezers to kind of clamp that down I'm sure it's here we go okay so that side is done so now we've got the next arm now this one right here pay attention to because the ends are different on it so you want to make sure that you are not putting the incorrect end into the one hinge that it shouldn't be. So according to the instructions, I've got this oriented correctly now. Go ahead and get those pins put in. And right off the bat, Pretty quick, pretty easy, right? And then this right here. 
And yes, with this, I've even found that sometimes it's easier just to lay it down like this, line it up, and squeeze it closed. All right, so now that one's done. So we'll go back to our main part here. And that's going to slide on there just like that. and get a little CA glue, apply it to the inside of this hinge, and then just slide it in place. Now that's finished, the remaining assembly is pretty quick and easy. Just some CA glue here and here. This is really a shame. Um, oddly enough, there's really nice detail in here. This little uh, looks like a kind of like a little gear or something like that, um, and it's going to be all but completely covered up here by this part. Alright, so, got that in place, and the last part here, just a little bit of CA glue right here, and I put a little bit up top, kind of right there, and go ahead and turn this around. And Mr. Butterfinger's here with the uh, tweezers. Okay, and it looks like that's all ready to After go. these assemblies are complete, we're supposed to put those on the ship. However, I'm going to go out of order again um, because I think it would be easier to go in the order I'm prescribing, uh, personally. They would have you throw on some railings and then this uh, little ladder right here with a platform attached right there. And I think, in my opinion, that's going to get in the way of attaching these four assemblies right here. I believe these are Mark 53 uh, like decoy launchers. Um, so I went ahead and got three of these attached and I'm going to walk through uh, making one with you. It's pretty simple and straightforward, but this is the best way I've found to do it. So stay with me here. As you can see there's one photo etch piece right here. If that will resolve, there it is. You can kind of see the etch surface there. I know that's not focusing great, and I just I think it's just because of the glare. Um, I, at any rate, I turn that over to the non-finished side. I get a tiny dab of medium CA. And then I pick up the resulting base piece that goes on it. And if you'll study the instructions real carefully, this piece has got four little posts that line up with the four little holes here. And so you just put that in place, flip it over, make sure it's centered, and make sure that the little posts are coming through the holes in the photo edge part. And you also want it to be lined up if you can, as much as you can. All right, after that, I next found it easy take the larger part, this is the upright part, and there's two posts here and here that line up with two holes on the photo etch part. So again a dab of CA glue. I'm lining up the posts with the little holes in the photo etch and getting it seated in there properly. There we go. And then you just have uh, your 10 or 15 seconds of working time to make sure it's centered. But after that's done, press it down into place. And now we 
we can go ahead and fold up these supporting sides. Just a touch of CA here. And fold this up here. Pretty quick, pretty straightforward. In the end, you're going to have a little bit of CA to clean up at the base of these supports, but that's all right. The other thing to ensure is you want to make sure it stands up pretty straight. Uh, so here are the other three I already did. As you can see, they stand up pretty good. But yeah, just have to clean up a little CA and those four are done. Um, okay, so what I decided to do here is go ahead and attach those little Mark 53 decoy launchers <clears throat> to that platform just aft of the first funnel structure or the most four funnel structure. But before doing so, I thought it might be tricky to get that uh, back piece of railing that surrounds that platform in uh, with those Mark 53s in place. So here I am attaching that back piece of railing. Um, there's a couple tiny little supports there right at the very back of that platform. Uh, and sometimes just getting that to stand up straight on there is a little tricky. You can kind of see me fiddling around a little bit with my tweezers in order to kind of get that to stand up. So we've got that on there. Um, I always use medium thin, or I'm sorry, medium CA for those kinds of applications. I feel like I just get a little bit more working time with it. Uh, same thing here with uh, putting these Mark 53s on. They're all painted up. Uh, I clear coated them and weathered them and then flat coated stuff. And uh, right now I'm just going to go ahead and put the medium CA on the bottom <clears throat> because it's not really load bearing or anything like that. So I'm not too concerned about having a plastic to plastic type of bond right there. So a little bit of paint uh, right there in between that. Uh, part and the ship and the CA bond, it, it's not going to make a whole lot of difference. Um, just in, you know, I don't, not expecting any hurricane force winds to come along and knock them off. But, uh, the first one's already on there. You can see me getting the second one on there. I know, this is uh, absolutely riveting stuff, right? And here I am off camera there, throwing the CA on there, the toothpick. And uh, as you'll also notice there in the lower right hand corner, uh, that's my uh, slab of granite. It's just a 12 inch by 12 inch uh, black granite tile. That's usually what I cut all of my photo etch pieces on because it doesn't give. So I don't have any deflection or anything like that in the brass when I'm, you know, cutting out photo etch parts. So a oh, little adjustment needed here on that just to make sure that it sits down and sits even with the first one I put on ahead and flip them around. All right. It uh, was always kind of a little bit nerve-wracking here moving moving the ship around like that especially with the camera and the overhead light uh, just right over top of it just because it's got that mass structure and I was always afraid I was going to break something off. Uh, but Luckily, that hadn't happened. Uh, that has not been a problem throughout this entire build. So that's a good thing for me, I guess. All three are going to go on there. And then after this, we're going to go ahead and put the railing up right after we get those on there. It, again, it just didn't make any sense to me how the instructions were laid out with putting that ladder and the railing onto that area and then having to move these over top of the railing and if you had to press them into place with whatever adhesive you're using that would have been very very difficult with those railings in place so this right here just absolutely made the most sense to me you see how I used my left hand there to brace my right hand uh, and that always gives me just a little bit more a little bit more stability when working on this kind of stuff. So there we go. That's all nice and set. Okay, so uh, after we get those Mark 53s in place, uh, I believe they're decoy launchers, at least what I read on Google, 
Um, these these other two big things here, one of which I'm putting onto the starboard side right now, from what I was able to tell, I think they're also a type of decoy launcher. Um, it, it just sometimes there was not a lot for me to find resource-wise on this, but uh, this started with the bottom locating peg going into its corresponding hole there on the starboard side of the midship's deck right there. Um, and that, that one uh, support strut, the aft strut, goes into the aft funnel structure. Uh, and then I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit of CA glue on the bottom of the locating hinge there on the four strut onto that. And that just goes into the little platform right in front of one of the Mark 53s. The placement on these was just a little tricky. Um, I wanted to make sure I took good care and took my time. That said, the starboard one went pretty quickly. I did not actually film the port one. I just figured it would be a little redundant. It's just kind of this right here in reverse. But, uh, yeah, I t took my time, took some patience, uh, chose my uh, tools with care, and I was able to get that into place with not very much hassle. All right, I think we saw my Optivisor right there. I, what's coming next, I believe, is the little railing. Yep, there it is. Go ahead and get it ready. I have a little bit of CA glue on. <clears throat> and as you can see, uh, just making sure that I'm getting my, getting my tweezers um, and my tool placement, you know, about as about as well prepared as I can just to make sure that I'm not damaging anything on the rest of the completed ship and see I'd have to go back for another dip in CA okay got the railing we got the CA I'll throw it on there real quick that should kind of knock out this portion of page 37 and page 38 Decoy launchers on there, the railing on there, so starboard starboard side, good to go. Uh, we'll go ahead and repeat on the port side. Like I said, not too much on there. The only difference is there's a ladder that also has to get put into place. Okay, so next up here is going to be step 45 on page 38. We'll be making uh, two of these, one of which I've already got together. So I'll just go over that process real quickly. Go over that process real quickly. Um, as I've done previously, I already took the parts off and I've cleaned them up. So they are ready for assembly right in front of us. What we're doing really is this nest in there, just putting in a little bit of to me, extra thin. Not going to hurt if you flood it a little bit. Uh, all it's going to really kind of do is close up any gap. But for the most part, you're not even really going to notice that after everything's assembled. Uh, the main concern on this assembly, though, are these three teeny tiny parts. Uh, if you can judge next to my fingernail, that's about the size of them. It is a steering wheel. It is a, uh, I guess it's a rudder, and then the uh, propeller. So I started off with putting propeller on previously so on the one I've already done so we'll go ahead and do that for this one right now yeah. is there and I get everything to cooperate so I'm gonna go ahead and no you know what I take that back actually I believe this is just the I don't know I feel like I've seen some of these with outboard engines So, I mean, I guess a lot of it is just checking your references, but at any rate, all I know is the, uh, this, uh, propeller shaft, I guess we could just say it's the propeller shaft. So, okay, so that's on there. I'm going to do the steering wheel next while that propeller shaft sets up. Again, if I can get the part to cooperate. All right, hopefully everyone can see what I'm doing here and my big fat head's not in the way. Go ahead and 
get this guy seated in place. I'm going to turn him over. There is a slight dimple right in the center of this that was etched into the part. So it should allow it to sit right on the steering column for this. Now the part's so tiny, it's the challenge is mainly just getting it to line up properly. Looks good. Close enough for government work, right? Alright, so while it's doing its thing, I did a little extra on this, and that was just pretty much turning these propeller blades, blades out a little bit. Not much. but just enough to give it a little bit of a three-dimensional look. And in the end, there's a good chance no one will notice anyway. At least I'll know it's there. All right, so pick this guy up. Put a little bit of CA glue on that propeller shaft. All right. And we'll put him in place. If you're into the whole super detailing thing, the, I'm sure these little, what are they called, uh, rigid hull inflatable boats offer all kinds of opportunities for <clears throat> super detailing. Uh, for instance, you can, you know, put a lot more detail into there. I know a lot of the new detail sets also offer uh, some pretty interesting setups and it, the the pieces look very 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 good um i'm not going that route though uh in the end i'd prefer not to spend two or three times what the actual kit itself cost um, before adding the aftermarket set so i'm going to go ahead and put this uh frame together here real quick while we're at it and then assembly this is pretty straightforward just load this up with some cement and there we go this only consists of four pieces it's not terrible to put together this part here gets put together alright and some of this you really have to Study your assembling very carefully. And so what it looks like actually is originally the instructions look like you would put these pieces together and then put them on there, but the way the instructions are set up, it just kind of overlaps. So they do go on there separately. Um, and uh, this also offers uh, another fantastic opportunity for super detailing because you could add the lines and everything to put on this. Uh, if you look online at uh, reference pictures, it looks like the rigid inflatable hull boats or rigid hull inflatable boats are typically stowed and this is already attached. Uh, there's, you know, the little uh, normal pulley that comes down off the crane and then there's four lines from that that attach right to that and it looks looks exactly like how they're stowed normally while the ship's underway and they're not being used. Um, but that is that for step 45. Be right back in a second.
Now we get to begin uh, step 46 on page 39, and uh, it's pretty exciting. It's the five inch gun. It's actually one of the most visible, um, recognizable weapons on USS Curtis Wilbur. So uh, go ahead and explain briefly some of the improvements I made here because, um, well, I'll just show you. Um, one, just to point out, there are some photo edge parts here and strong word of caution here. Put these two photo edge pieces, A64 and A19, on before you put on ZA1, which is a teeny tiny little plastic part. If you put this on first, A64 is not going to slide all the way down, as they would have you do, and then you may have a little trouble getting that into place, just being able to recognize exactly where that goes and adjust it as necessary. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and explain how I took care of the barrel part. Uh, not necessarily how everyone should put it together, just how I did it and prefer to do it. And then we'll quickly put everything else together here, except for these two B-52 steps that go right on the sides on each side. Uh, they're so minuscule, the camera's just not going to capture me doing that. So uh, without further ado, <clears throat> when I decided to take on the barrel to USS Curtis Wilbur and this five inch gun here, um, one I started cleaning this up. This is a, again, it's so it's so thin, it's hard to see. It's slide molded, which is nice because that means they, you know, you don't have to drill out the end of this to represent a barrel. Um, but the problem is there's a seam that runs on the top and the bottom. You have to sand off. And then on my example, there's also a slight step uh, in correcting these while keeping this perfectly round to be a barrel is at the best of times, difficult. And that's even with large pieces. Um, but as you can see, it doesn't roll, it stops. So that means definitely there's either still a step or during my attempt to correct it, um, I left a flat spot. Uh, something so thin, you really risk uh, damaging this to an unusable state. So with that, I decided to take on the challenge of replacing the kit provided barrel with brass. Um, and let's face it, nothing represents metal better than actual metal. So um, I used two pieces of really, really thin brass tube. There's one piece and then there's another piece. And I did this and drilled this out so that one would nest inside the other. Um, and it kind of represent on there where there's a kind of that uh, next sleeve of the barrel. So that is what I ended up with. And then I put a, another brass peg on the back side of this and drilled into the plastic piece in order to be able to set that in firmly. Um, you also notice here um, a quick tip from me if uh, you know you wish to follow along and do what I did was I left part of the sprue on here. This is so much easier to hold on to than you know, cutting this off completely there. Uh, it just enabled me to have a nice hand hold on this while I was drilling and kind of fettling around with this. Um, and in addition, we got those photo etch pieces, uh, A19 on there and A64 down around here. This goes all the way down. Um, I put it on, but frankly, I'm not sure why I bothered uh, because it's barely visible at all and there was already a ring molded around this base of this barrel as it is but it's on there just so i could say i used the kit parts um, all of the parts for this assembly all come off of the za plastic sprue and then uh, you have these two teeny teeny tiny and i don't think you're even going to be able to make these out but they're like little ring steps and again they go up on the side here you drill these out super glue pop them in. Um, but other than that, assembly on this is pretty straightforward, and we'll go ahead and do so while we're here. So the first thing we're going to do here is we're going to put this part on. Um, when I prepared this, I had to sand off the sides here because there's a little bevel that goes outward, and I sanded that off. That bevel was kind of making this difficult to fit and drop in. It was kind of flaring this out and making it diff for that, difficult for that to go all the way in. So I'm going to go ahead and 
some cement on there. And then we can always go back and hit the inside of this, but I want it to go in there nicely. There we go. So now that it's in there, and I don't have to worry about the risk of it falling out, I can go on the back side and add a little bit more cement. I'm getting close to the end of this bottle of extra thin. So sometimes you don't get as much on the little applicator brush as you'd prefer, but that is on there now. So that is the first step of the instructions for that assembly. The next step here is going to be putting that gun in between these two supports right here. I'm going to go ahead and separate this now from this. Um, and again, it's as the instructions do suggest, putting the tiny parts on here prior to mounting that into the supports, it's a good recommendation. All right, and this little part managed to almost slip off and escape. Go ahead and get it put on there. Very tiny parts. So something else I notice also is this part that I'm putting on right now, which is ZA1, was quite a bit wider than what I think it should be uh, based on reference reference photos. So I cut it down to size a little bit, but uh, I'm much happier with the way it looks now. Now it's on there. I'm going to go ahead and... I'm not going to do it as they suggest here. I'm going to put one of these supports into the base first. Tell you what, actually, I'm going to go ahead and put both the both the supports in while that cement is still nice and soft. I'll have a little bit of wiggle room, and then I'll be able to kind of sandwich it in there. Well, that plan has went out the window. And better yet, it actually split open on one of the split open on one of the mounting holes for this. I'll show you what I mean here. So in this instance, I did not test fit like I should have, and that's what happened. After all, we're all human though, right? But this is just one of those pieces where if you mess it up, it's going to be instantly, instantly visible. Okay. And then after that, what they'd have you do is mount this in there. And guess what? You can't get it in all the way because of ZA1. So pulling that off. Nice job. I love it. Thank you. Oh, 
Okay. Now. Now that looks a little bit more convincing. So you'll also notice I've uh, painted a lot of the parts prior to installation on the ship. I figured uh, watching me airbrush parts is probably not the most intriguing part of these builds. So I've already painted all this stuff that I'm putting on here. Um, I was very excited to put this 5 inch gun into place though. Uh, it's always neat to see stuff like this which look like very prominent features uh, go into place. So. I was pretty excited about getting this put in, and it looks a little bit more like a United States destroyer now. Next up is the 25mm Bushmaster machine guns. Um, <clears throat> I actually kind of skipped over putting in the four 50 caliber tripods and the 50 calibers. So they, those were a complete pain. Um, the pieces are not great. The photo wedge is not great. They do not go down on the deck that great. Um, and then the little sections cut out of the shields for those do not allow the barrels to slip into them real nicely and easily. So that was a pain. That was kind of a wrestle and there was uh, many adult words used during that little chapter. So just kind of decided to not include it all together just uh, to kind of spare you guys uh, hearing me rant and rave over that. But uh, the Bushmasters went in real nice, real easy, uh, really good, clean little models. And so next up what we've got here in front of us is the boarding ladder. And uh, I don't know what to say about this other than its fixation points are not great. However, uh, just kind of, I don't know, the stars aligned and uh, good fortune was smiling upon me because it went in pretty easily. So there's just two bare tiny little points on that plastic part that the photo etch on that boarding ladder has to rest on. And for the most part, that boarding ladder is just one plastic piece along with a long staircase that you have to fold into. You have to fold up the sides and then you have to fold up each stair and then you just smack together with that plastic piece. That's really all there is to it. Um, painted and then weathered and at this point put on the model. Looks good. So what we're doing now is on the aft end here, these are the safety nets that surround the flight deck. And for the most part, when the ship's underway, these are in the position that I am modeling them in. In reality though, when an actual helicopter comes in for landing, <clears throat> they get deployed down to a, like a horizontal that's flush with the deck. You get in deployed into a horizontal position and that's just to make sure that the uh, nets don't run the risk of fouling landing gear on an SH-60 or anything like that coming in for a landing. Um, but additionally you wouldn't see the flagstaff and the other um, little tall skinny thing and you'll see to the uh, you know next to my left index finger. Um, I think that other tall skinny thing quote unquote is something for deploying one of the various ship systems there for uh, I don't know uh, maybe anti-submarine uh, or you know what have you at any rate the uh, safety nets I'll cut out cut off all the little nibs um, afterwards but prior to that I made sure I primed all of them and then I painted them in uh, uh, to me as deck tan XF something or the other. I can't remember the code they use, but XF definitely means uh, to me a flat. And after they all got cut out, then they all got a slight bend. I think we're talking maybe a 75 degree angle. And uh, then at that point I decided to glue them all along the bottom and just a spot of uh, CA glue 
right below the fold and that helped them stick pretty quickly to the side of the hole where they attach. Uh, word of warning, study your hole well before you attach these if you haven't done so yet. Just because the instructions show some of the little, little bumps uh, that these would kind of rest on and some of them are not there. Uh, I didn't sand them off because some of them are so close that if I had sanded one off I would have sanded the other off. Um, so they're just not there. They weren't either they were never intended to be molded there with the mold that uh, went into this hole or I just had a short shot of uh, some sort on on the molding but nonetheless plan it out well. Uh, these definitely this these nets were not the easiest bit of photo etch to to attach to the model. However, it does look good after it's done. It's just got a very nice different color there. It adds a little bit of uh, different coloration to the ship overall. Um, and they look good in place. They they really do. So I mean I loved it. I love Kit did well with the photo etch on this. It just it was kind of a pain to pain to put on there. Um, so another thing I wanted to mention, um, and I'm not going to show him a video, is I installed the anchor chains and the anchors, and uh, that was that was a lot of work. Um, so I didn't show it because this video could have gone on for a couple of hours. But uh, I used the HS models uh, anchor chain versus the kit chain, and I gave that a quick prime in uh, Mr. Surfacer 1500 black and after I was able to put that onto the deck I was able to add some various rust stains. I was very happy with the overall effect. Um, the anchor I added a little bit of rust effects to the the bow anchor <clears throat> and then the additional anchor that's on the port side from all of the pictures I saw was looked like it was brass so I I went with that and actually kind of happy with the different coloration on that. Um, I'm not 100% sure, I'm just going with what the pictures show. Alright, so I'm about to attach the final parts on this for the most part, which are the railings. You can actually see at the top of the picture I've already done the starboard side. I'm about to attach the uh, port, some of the port side railings here. These are just the railings that uh, go around the entire perimeter of the hull of the ship. And I kind of wanted to share a trick that I learned off of YouTube here. And I was taking these tiny little strips of Tamiya tape, attaching them to the railing after kind of uh, detacking them a little bit on the back of my skin. Some of the oil on your skin will actually help detack some of the some of the glue that is on the tape um, and that's just to kind of help prevent some of the paint coming off on the uh, of, of the photo etch railing it's not a hundred percent unavoidable it's gonna happen so just prepare yourself for that there's gonna be touch-up painting but the more you detack that the better it works um, however there is a fine line if you detack it all the way it's not gonna do intended job here which is kind of helping it stick to the side of the ship so after I get that up there and kind of in place where I want it I'm using the tape to kind of hold the ladder to the hole I'm using one of the glue loopers <clears throat> and I'm going to lightly tack down in some spots with some very thin CA glue I'm going to work there and while we watch Boring Me shake all over the place and apply that, and yeah, they're shaking because it's very, very tiny work and there's a lot of concentration going on. Um, I just wanted to bring up the fact that also toward the end of this, um, and I'm not showing it on video as well, but I did attach the American flag on that uh, oh, aft God. flagstaff. And for the most part, that was pretty cool the way I did it I took the decal off in whole and I put it down on tissue paper that I wet down <clears throat> and after that dried up hundred percent I was able to pull the decal off and away from the tissue paper and then I was able to fold it back onto itself so it was now a two-sided flag 
And after that, I kind of held that and brushed a little bit of diluted PVA glue onto it, just using Elmer's glue and uh, some water. And after I kind of let that sit in place and dry, and I gave it a little furl, and it held the shape that I liked, and I was able to later use uh, medium CA to attach that to the flagstaff. And uh, I was really happy with the way that looked, and it's got a real nice scale thinness to it as well. And because it's double-sided, it, it, it doesn't look weird. Um, so there we go. I'm peeling off the tape, the Tamiya tape, because I've got the railing tacked into place. All right, you can see there's still a little bit of flex to it. Now I'm going to use the glue looper to finish gluing this all the way down afterwards here. So I, I know, and I'm sorry, it's tough to see um, exactly what I'm doing here, but if you touch the very bottom lip of that glue looper to the join of where that railing meets the plastic deck, it's going to wick into there just using capillary action. Um, and afterwards, I'll tip this up here and show you what it looks like, but that is the best way so far that I've ever heard to attach railings to a ship. These things are incredibly fragile, especially after you already painted them. Um, everyone hates doing touch-up painting. So, for the most part, this is, this is what works for me all the time now. Um, there we go. And come on, time for the prize fighting shot. There we go. I hope you try that out. I hope it works as well for you as it did for me. So, what's next for Patrick Scale Studio? I'm going to be building the USS Yorktown CV5 M1200 scale. I've got the Ponto set for the Enterprise. Uh, while it's not the same ship, they're sister ships, so they'll share a lot of the same parts. I've got a lot of reference material for it as well. Um, and I'm thinking right now we're going to go with the mid to late 1940s configuration there with the overall light gray. Uh, the dark brown deck with yellow markings, and that great big Y that's on the side of the funnel. Additionally, I still have the U-boat and the Spitfire Hurricane build. Uh, and there's probably going to be a couple other videos or series coming up soon, such as a Zero um, and maybe an armor model here or there. So we'll just have to see. I hope you'll stay with me and continue to see some of these projects coming up. Until next time, stay safe. Happy modeling.